Okay, I guarantee you okay, that this topic is an easy one. Okay, talking about the long run and the short run total cost curves. Okay, if you manage to understand the previous uh, video, which is on the ISO cost and ISO quan, okay, you will be able to deal with this very, very easily. Okay, now, <coughs> same thing. Okay, I know I'm a neck, but uh, go download the my map, right? Okay. First, uh, let's talk about this concept known as the law of diminishing returns. Okay, so the law of diminishing returns is basically the decreasing marginal product. Okay, as one production factor is increased and the others remained constant. So, um, if I keep my capital constant, okay, so that's a short run, and I just keep increasing my labor, will my productions, okay, well my the scale of my production follow suit okay, uh, on the same scale as my labor increasing so if let's say I were to hire one worker to produce one computer game okay if I produce two workers will it still produce two computer games if I hire three workers will it produce three computer games okay not necessarily true alright so let me give you this example okay so we have uh, one computer so the computer is going to be our capital and our labor here, our little worker guy over here. So he's able to produce one game per day. So I'm going to hire somebody else, okay, another worker. And what happens is that he produces three games a day. Wow! How, how can this be happening? Okay, maybe because the two of them decide to cooperate and uh, come up with some kind of a procedure or some kind of a of a method, you know, to help each other out to produce computer games and um, this actually results in a, a higher productivity okay, so that's how uh, two workers can produce actually three games a day okay, so what we have here is uh, increasing return to factor okay, so now I'm gonna hire one more guy and uh, what's gonna happen, whoa, I can have seven games a day th th that's impressive, you know, so um, I'm having increasing returns factor because uh, when I increase my inputs by a little bit, my production increases by a bit more. Okay? So now we add on another worker, but it becomes 8 games a day. Hey, you know, why isn't it increasing much more? Well, the reason is because there's only one computer and this results in one worker slacking. So um, it is not necessarily. Uh, good to always hire more and more people because your capital might not be able to sustain your level of production. Okay, so that's what the law of diminishing returns is telling us. Okay, so um, how do we know this? Is there a way to prove this? Um, actually, okay, this is actually shown more uh, numerically. Okay, so um, it is is uh, based on statistics shown. Okay, so there's really no mathematical model to, to show, you know, why this thing happens, but, uh, yeah, anyway, okay, this is what the short run total cost should look like because of this thing known as uh, return, to, return to factor, uh, the law of diminishing returns. So, this is what it looks like, the, the short run total cost, and this part where it's uh, caved this way is your increasing returns part, and where it's caved in this way is called your decreasing returns part. And the middle part, you know, where it changes, you know, the 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 um yeah, yeah the the point where it changes direction, okay, it's your constant returns part. And the total cost curve is gonna start at uh, this point over here on the total cost because that rep represents a fixed cost. Okay, yeah. So this is what the total cost looks like. You just gotta know that it's in this shape and uh, what this side of the slope means and what this side of the slope means. Returns to scale, okay, is uh, the same thing, but now we're talking about the long run. So, yeah, I can I can increase my capital and my labor at the same time. So why why experience the same thing? Okay, well the theory says that uh, in the long run, the company gets too big, okay, it gets too big that uh, it's hard to manage. Okay, so since it's hard to manage, you know you you will be less productive, you know as you produce more. More, more, more units. Okay, 
So what we have here is that as the inputs increase, more levels in management okay, is required to control the resources. Therefore, it leads to inefficiency and therefore it leads to decreasing returns. And this is how your total cost curve is going to look like. Okay, And the reason why it starts at the origin is because the fixed costs are variable. So everything is variable. You produce zero. Okay, you will pay zero. Right? Okay. We're almost done. Okay, so this is a fast one. Now, where the short run expansion path equals to the long run expansion path, okay, watch my pointer very closely, okay, where th that is where the short run total cost will meet the long run total cost. Okay, just look at the purple point here at point A. The short run expansion path meets the, the long run expansion path meets the short run expansion path. Okay, and we know that the cost is going to be the same in this case, so they both share the same ISO cost and they are both paying at C0. That is why C0 over here is where the two cost curves will meet. Okay, and producing an X0. See, X0 is this ISO quant, X0. Alright, so now we talk about the the lower level of production at X1. So you're producing an X1 over here, the blue color line X1. Okay, what will be the cost? Okay, in the long run, the cost is going to be here, C1. Okay, and in the short run, the cost is going to be here, C2. So your short run cost is higher than your long run cost. That is why we have something that looks like this over here. Okay, the, the curve you know is higher on this on this portion over here. Okay, now we talk about a higher level of production, X2. Okay, look at the green look at the green green part, okay? So that is where okay your long run expansion path is here. Your long run expansion, your long run ISO cost is at C three. Short run will be at C four. So C four is higher than C three. Short run is more costly than long run. Therefore, your short run total cost is going to be higher than your long run total cost. Okay, so I'm sure this is in your notes. You know, it doesn't matter which lecture it is. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this so that uh, you guys can take a look at it. Okay, yes, see I told you it's going to be very simple. You just got to know that it's in this shape. Okay, now for a little bit more advanced uh, stuff. What if the question states that there is uh, returns to scale throughout? Like for example, the question states that this firm is experiencing uh, constant returns to scale throughout. Okay. Or decreasing or increasing returns to scales throughout. Okay, so we know that the slope, okay, of the, the the curvature of the total cost curve will tell us whether what kind of returns to scale is facing. Okay, I hope that you saw the my map, yeah, because I actually put it over here. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is usually only you know they they will usually talk about the long run. Okay, so. This is how my long run total cost curves are going to look like if, let's say, the question say that okay, the firm is experiencing increasing returns to scale throughout, constant returns to scale throughout, and decreasing returns to scale throughout. Okay, so what well, you just have got to apply the short run total cost. Okay, so for example, this you will just look like that. You will touch here and you go up. Okay, so this is my long run total cost. This is my short run total cost. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.